Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Light Images. This is one of a series of videos connected with this, the 110 millimeter tilt shift lens, uh, G mount, so it's medium format, uh, from Fujifilm. It was announced in September. Uh, this and the 30 millimeter, which I looked at in some detail at the end of last year, um, are two tilt shift lenses of exceptional quality. Um, I've tested a lot of tilt shift lenses over the years. In fact, I've written a book on how to use them and how to get the best out of them. But this feels solid in its engineering. It gives you 15 millimeters of shift, which is a lot. It gives you 10 degrees of tilt, which means the tilt is very usable. What's this lens really aimed at? Well, there's an example shot here. This is a building. Um, now, I'm an architectural and industrial photographer. Uh, I would use this much less in my architectural work because I have to stand a fair distance away from it. So this is for detail. We might not need the shift. For shift, shift here is looking at the building to stop the building sort of having converging verticals if you point the camera up to look upwards at something. Um, but I covered that much more when looking at the 30 mil because that's a lens I'd use much more for architecture. This I see a lens much more for studio use, for um, interior use, products, lifestyle product shots. In particular, the tilt is going to be used. There are far more creative and effective uses of tilt on a lens like this than I would suggest you would normally use for the 30 mil. In fact, you can get shift lenses which are shift only, which shows the, the wide angle ones, some of the lower ones. They are shift only and the lack of tilt on those is not that great a problem, I find. But then that's what I'm going to use them for. Now, this one, unlike the uh, 30 mil, this one doesn't have a tripod mount on the lens. It's a very heavy lens. You can probably see from the way I'm holding it. Uh, this is not light to carry this around. Um, I did two shots handheld as well as shots. Um, you know, on a tripod. But what sets this one apart is just the overall image quality. Now have a look. I did another video which looks lots of example shots and it zooms right into them so you can see them at the, you know, the full 100 megapixel resolution. You can see parts of the images and it's very good for that. So it's quality. It's, you could say so it ought to be at you know, the prices they're at, and these are not cheap lenses. But what sets this aside, and was quite interesting to her, is the design of the tilt mechanism. Now, I'll just make sure the tilt is not locked. So there's a lock on the back here. There's a lock to lock it at zero, which you might want to use sometimes. And then there's a tight, an adjustable knob to tighten the slack on it. So there's quite a bit of movement. Now, the interesting thing is, the lens rotates about an axis like this. So this bottom end of the top section moves this way. The top section moves that way. So if I move it back again, you'll see the tilt of the lens is quite distinctive. What does that mean? It means it's much more symmetrical than uh, many adapted lenses and other lenses I've seen of this focal length. Um, the Canon TSE 90, the Mark II and the TSE 135, both excellent lenses. You can use them adapted on this. Um, they are slightly, uh, slightly cheap, still expensive lenses, slightly cheaper than this. Well worth a look as well, but this one really has been designed for this sensor. It works well. There's very little problems of anything vignetting or anything. Like that. I'll show an example about vignetting in a moment. But the tilt on this going up to as it does up to 10 degrees gives a very effective amount of movement to the plane of focus. Shift at 15 millimeter, that's good on a sensor this size as well. So it's, it's a nice lens to use. You can change the setting, the axis of where the tilt. So at the moment, the tilt, it tilts like that. I can rotate it so it tilts. In fact, I can set it at other angles as well. I can also change the shift axis. The whole lens itself rotates. So there's all the usual tricks you can do with modern tilt shift lenses like this in terms of setting the angles to get the plane where you want. In using, in setting the plane of focus, uh, the focus, um, the peaking on this is very useful. Although, F5.6, you think, oh, I'd like something a bit wider to see critical sharpness and focus. No, you don't. This is designed, this has never been designed to have a wide aperture. 
This has gone for quality from the start. So it's immensely usable at f5.6. Take it to f8. The depth of field gets a little thicker uh, when it's tilted or deeper when you want to in normal use. It's fine with that. Take it to f11, 16, yes. You might start getting a bit of loss from diffraction there. Certainly take it to f22 or f32, then yes, you are going to be seeing effects. But those aperture, small apertures are there for a reason, and that's because they're usable with a lens like this. Just another couple of quick physical aspects of it. There are various locks and things to stop it. The lens itself does, you can see the front of the lens extends by just over a centimetre or so. But if you look internally to the lens, you can see that the centre optics of the lens extends even further. So there are moving parts for this. Um, it is, it'll take filters. Obviously it came with a filter, a uh, clear filter. Um, that is 72 mil. If you want to use, the field of view is narrow enough that uh, you would be able to use wider filters on it um, with adapters and the likes. Much easier to use filters on than, say, the 30 mil, which I know some people have a bit of problems with. I rarely use filters myself, so I didn't really notice much of an issue there, but it is potentially a problem, I've noticed. But, um, as I say, you go to this, and the inside element of the lens comes forward. There's probably about that much movement of the front element on this so that moves um, internally to the lens now I've got I will have lots more stuff on this in the actual written review so there's that shot as I said of the building now just get rid of that one what I've got here let's move this over here is a series of shots taken on this light box and it looks at, and this I've introduced some uh, posterization on it to show it. Now this will be in the written review if you want to see the details of this. What am I looking for here? Well, there is some, certainly f5.6, there is a bit of vignetting, classic vignetting, off-axis vignetting, it's there. And that drops off until it, it becomes, by the time you get to f11, it's not much. And it's almost disappeared by the time you get to f11. F, F16, F22 or so. That's fair enough. That's with no shift. Now it turns, if you look on this, one of the nice bits is that the amount of shift, but not tilt, is encoded in EXIF data. So you can actually see on the back of the screen what the settings are. So I could set things reliably. Now these pictures, and I say they are of a white field here from this old slide viewer. And with seven and a half mil shift and with 15 mil shift. What can I see is Normal vignetting, shifted with the lens shifted, but at between f5.6 and f11, there is a little bit of what I call sh tilt, vin I'm sorry, shift vignetting. So that's extra vignetting that you don't normally get because of the natural drop off of a lens. It's because of the inner mount. Now it's tiny on this. It's much more on many other lenses. Certainly if you put adapted lenses on here, you will notice this a lot. Is it a problem? No, not really, but it's interesting to see it's there and it disappears by about F16. Um, I can't think offhand of any specific uses where I would have to worry about this, but it is there. And it shows that um, even with the optics here limited to F5.6, there is some physical vignetting with this amount of movement you've got. Add in tilt and you'll get a type of, you'll get some vignetting as well, but that's natural effect of when you tilt a lens. In general, the tilt on this is very predictable. I had no real problems on it. What I do is just, I've got an example here, and here is a um, view of the back of the camera, just down in the conservatory. Here's the camera viewed from above. Now from above, you can see the lens is tilted. And here is a view and it's looking along a window frame. Now I've used tilt and I've used an iterative approach. And I've got a video about how iterative tilt focusing works uh, for close up stuff. But I've used that to get both of the ornaments in focus there. So that's the view on the back of the screen. I can see looking at the screen tells me there's no shift, which is good. I don't need shift in this. I'll just move this over here. And here's the actual image that was taken. And you'll see, although the window frame is running at quite an angle, 
I've put the planar focus running along so that both the Christmas ornaments are sharp. That is the sort of thing you can use tilt for. That is the sort of thing that other tilt lenses, when you try it, you lose some definition when you add tilt. This works absolutely fine. So it's a very nice lens. Um, as I have a look at the written review, we'll have far more details on it and examples you can click on and look at stuff. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, as I, unfortunately, the lens is going back, so I can't do any more uh, testing on it. But yeah, it's, it's a nice lens. It is incredibly sharp. It gets the full amount of detail out of this 100 megapixel sensor. Some of the pictures that I've got in the other video where you zoom in, the details are really impressive on it. But um, there you go, tilt shift lens, 110 millimeter, medium format. Um, would I buy one? I'm not sure I've got the business case for this one um, in terms of product photography and the likes. The 30 mil, hmm. That's why I just haven't got the money spare for it. That I would like. Both excellent lenses. I hope that Fuji are going to expand their range of lenses like this. It would be nice to see something a bit wider than the 30 millimeter. And it might be nice to see something in the mid range here, about a, a 60, 70, something like that, that, you know, that gives you a different field of view. Um, but it's good that Fuji have done this. And I certainly appreciate them lending them to me. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you find it interesting. Um, I know stuff like this is a little bit niche, but um, nobody else does much about these. Uh, so the channel will be sort of interesting lenses, printing and other stuff. And uh, that's what we're going to do for it. Anyway, thanks again for watching and bye.